Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks. We come together Monday through Friday to pray for the seven mountains of influence. I believe by praying during our lunchtime, we can transform these seven mountains of influence day by day. Oftentimes, we have moments where we can sneak away during our lunchtime and pray. You may pray with other people. You may pray by yourself, but spend a few moments captivating and cultivating that time during your lunch hour to pray. You don't have to pray the whole entire time, but you can spend a few moments each day in prayer and transforming our nation. Today, we're praying against groups with false ideologies gaining influence in the government. And we're praying against groups with false ideologies gaining influence in the government. God's word is truth. We know that from the word of God, but we've also walked out the word and we know that the word works. Amen. Some people are wondering, well, how do we know that the Bible is true? We're quoting it and we're using it. And how do you know? Well, I've seen the word work. I've seen the healing power of the word of God. I've seen the miraculous power of the word of God. I've seen my God come through for me based on his word. And so I stand on the promises of God. I stand on the word because the word works. I can trust in, rely on, believe the living word of God. Amen. Proverbs 29 and 2 reminds us when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. We want the righteous to be in authority and we want the truth to be spread throughout our land. We want the word of God to go forth in the land. And, and as disciples of Jesus Christ, we're commanded during the, through the great commission in Matthew, we're commanded to spread the gospel, to disciple, to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're to be a light unto the lost. We are to be the truth and we're supposed to practice righteousness. Amen. So when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked are in power, they groan. Let us be led of the Lord as we vote. Let us be led of the Lord as we move and we operate in the government. Let us be led of the Lord. Amen. Because the enemy wants to get a foothold. He wants to go in and he wants to take over certain things. He wants to rule. He wants to be worshipped. And we don't want to focus on the wicked one, but we want to be aware. We don't want to be ignorant of his devices. We want to be spreading the gospel and to let the righteous rule in the land. Psalm 33, 4 and 5, for the word of the Lord holds true and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. Our God is true and the word of the Lord holds true. It lasts from generation to generation. It endures forever. We can trust him. We can trust everything that he does. So when the false ideologies come in, they will fall. They will fail. But we must spread the gospel and we must stop the spreading of falsities. How do we do that? We pray. And we don't allow the works of darkness to go unchallenged in our communities. We pray, we operate in love, we are the light, we disciple, amen? But we love, we love, we love. Kindness leads them to repentance. And God's word sanctifies us. John 17, 17. In this scripture, Jesus is praying to the Father and he says this, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. He's telling God his word is truth. And God knows his word is truth, but he's praying this out loud. And we can see and study the word of God and see it is true. Now, God sets us apart by his truth. The word sanctify in the Greek means to make holy, consecrate, which is to be set apart. Amen. His word sanctifies us. 
In 1 John 2, 24 through 27, it says this, Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Let us abide in the vine. Let us abide in the word of God and that truth abides in us. Amen. We know the truth and the truth needs to abide in us. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit who's indwelling in us, but we need to allow it to permeate. We need to allow that truth to transform us. We need to allow that truth to spring up, oh well, to overflow, amen, that that truth is going to rise up in us and that we are going to speak the truth, to speak the word of God in love. You know, our ministry, Elevated by Love Ministries, that is our mission to teach the word of God in love, that we would have prosperous and victorious lives, amen, that we would be successful in this life, but teaching the word of God in love. We are love through the Holy Spirit. God is love. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We exalt your name on high. You are a good God. You're a good father. You're loving. You're kind. You're faithful. You are just, you're a righteous God, a righteous judge. You love us. You loved us while we were yet sinners. You died for us through your son, Jesus Christ. You came and you allowed your son to know sin that we may become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. You allowed him to lay down his life so that we could be saved, that those who trust in him and confess him as their savior will be saved. Those that call in the name of the Lord. Help us, Father God, in this hour to spread forth your truth, to spread forth your mercies, your kindness, your goodness, your love. Help us to be love in the earth. Remove any falsities from us. Remove any deception. Remove any blinders. Spring forth and spring up a well in us that we may spring forth to revival, that we may spring forth and that our heart flows with rivers of living waters. Help us not to uh, thirst for these things of this world, but to thirst and hunger for righteousness because you will fill us up. You will overflow in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, that you are a well that we can drink from. As Jesus was with the woman at the well and she didn't know what she was standing before, help us not to take it lightly that Jesus is with us, that the Holy Spirit is within us, born again believers. Help us not to take lightly This moment that we have with you, fill us up again, fill us up to overflowing, overflow in our lives. Pour out your anointing fire, pour out your anointing oil, pour out, pour out, pour out. That we have a greater infilling in this hour. We pray against the false ideologies. We pray against the influences of darkness trying to overtake and overshadow what you're doing in this earth. We pray against the works of of demonic forces trying to infiltrate the minds of believers, the minds of the saints. We pray, Father God, you have given us the mind of Christ and we plead the blood of Jesus over the righteous in government. Father God, help us to stand forth and having to, don't all to stand, to stand fully armored. Help us not to waver to and fro. Help us not to be tossed to and fro. With every wind of doctrine, help us, Father God, not to waver between two opinions. As the Israelites, when they were with Elijah and he was making the sacrifice, he said, how long will you waver between two opinions? And Moses said to the children of Israel, choose this day whom you will serve. Help us, Lord, to serve you. We want to serve you, Lord. We want to follow you. We want to... Be in your presence, really in your presence, Lord. You're everywhere, you're omnipresent, but that we will 
submit and surrender to you and your presence to allow you to move in the atmosphere, not to quench your spirit, not to quench the anointing, but allowing you to flow in and through us, to surrender ourselves as living vessels, to surrender our mouths, surrenders our bodies as worshiping vessels, to surrender our tongues, to speak forth the prophetic revelations and to speak forth the utterances, the tongues, that we will surrender our lives, that we will lay it down and pick up our cross daily, that truly we will lay it all down, that nothing will separate us from the call that you have placed on our lives because we know that you love us, but that we will not distance ourselves from what you've called us to do, that we will not distance and push it away. We will not run to Tarshish when you've told us to go to Nineveh. We will not flee to the other direction as Jonah did, but help us, Lord, to surrender to the call that you have for us, whatever you've called us to do. Some you have called to stand up to the status quo. You call them to rise up in this hour, to stand forth and to push back the darkness, to make laws and decrees, to help set forth and establish your covenant in the earth. You've called them to rise up and some have shrunken back and we ask you to forgive us, Lord. Mm. Some you have called forth to see into uh, unseen realms in the natural eye. You call them to deep seer dimensions. And we ask you to unlock the eyes, unlock the eyes right now, Father God, that we may see clearly in the spirit that we can see because we walk by faith and not by sight. So we want to see clearly how we can walk in this moment, how we can walk forth. Help us, Lord. And to speak your word, your word is truth. Your word is power. Your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Help us, Father God, to use your word to discern the thoughts and intentions. Help us, Father God, to use your word to live by, to walk by, because it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Help us, Lord, to utilize the resources you put here on this earth for us to be successful. You are a friend and a father. You want us to flourish. You want us to thrive. You want your bride to be set apart, consecrated, holy, without blemish. You are a good God and we were made in your image and your likeness. Help us, Lord, to abide in your truth, to hold on to your truth, not to cast it away with every wind of doctrine, to hold on because it's true. Your word works. We need to work the word. Help us, Lord, to work the word, to put in practice what you've said, to obey, not to be only hearers of the word, but doers also. Help us, Lord, to walk circumspectly. Hmm. You honor the humble. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves in this hour. Help us, Lord, to persevere and to pray for our government. Help us not to... Hmm. Help us not to forget, to pray for them, to lift them up. Help us not to forget, to pray for those in authority. Help us not to forget. Bring it to our remembrance through your Holy Spirit. And sanctify us with your truth. Your word is true. Your word holds true. Let your word be true in every man. A liar. You are a true God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. If you've said it, it will come to pass. So we stand on your word and the promises that you have given us for this nation of America, that you've given us for the land, for this world. We stand. We decree and declare that the promises of God are coming forth. They are good. Your promises are yes and amen. And so we stand on the word of God. We shall not be silenced by the lies of the enemy. We shall not be silenced by the cares of this world, but we shall rise up in power, speaking forth the truth of God, speaking forth your word. We will decree and declare your promises. We will decree and declare what you've spoken to us in the secret place, which you've called forth for us to speak out of our mouths. Uh, Let it be like fire shut up in our bones that we must speak forth your word. Help us, Lord, to speak boldly in this hour, not to shrink back, not to think we're too small, too young, or, or too anything, but that we will speak forth 
forth what you have called us to speak forth, but help us, Father God, help us to prepare and to speak forth in the right time, in the right place, in the right way. Cleanse us of any of righteousness, any pride, anything that's preventing us from speaking forth your word accurately and purely because we don't want to miss it up, Lord. We want to speak forth what you're saying. We don't want to speak falsely. We don't want to say that you've said peace and there is no peace. We don't want to say that you're calling war and there's no war. We want to speak forth accurately the word of God because it matters. You take it seriously and help us, Lord, to take it seriously. Forgive us, Father God, for not taking it seriously, for not surrendering our tongue and our mouths to you. We pray against the false ideologies and groups gaining influence, but that the right people will rise up and restore, that the corruption will be removed, that we will rise up mightily in this nation and decree and declare that you are the one and true living God, because we stand on your word and your word is true and you are the one and true living God. You will be glorified and magnified in this place. You will be high and lifted up and draw men to your bosom through your son, Jesus Christ. We will decree and declare that Jesus Christ is risen and he died for our sins and he was raised again on the third day and we will serve the one and true living God as for me and my house we will serve the Lord help us Lord to stand on your word in this hour help us Lord to stand on your truth help us Lord to war with your word effectively help us not to lay down our plow to lay down our sword help us to stand victoriously in you because you win every battle So we will not back down. We will not shrink back. We will not stand for the false truths. We will not stand for the lies of the wicked one. Those teaching false ideologies to the children, teaching them to lie, teaching them that it's, hmm, that it's okay to sin, teaching them lies and perpetrating violence in the land. Help us, Lord. Forgive us, Father God. For some of us have taught lies. We've taught false truths. We've taught things that weren't accurate. Forgive us, Lord, for spirits of error and remove them from the bride. Remove them from the church. Remove them from us, Lord. We want to speak accurately. We want to speak boldly because the righteous are as bold as lions and your spirit gives us boldness as the apostles were bold through the power of the Holy Spirit. And those that looked upon them said, oh, they've been with the Lord because look at this boldness. To help us, Lord, that people look upon us and see the boldness that we have, that it came from you, that it didn't come from man, but it came from you and that we're speaking accurately. In Jesus' name. Uh, I want to explain, you know, I was praying, I was talking about uh, the false ideologies and uh, groups teaching children to lie. I was uh, seeing this even in a school where they were teaching the children that white lies are okay. White lies are, are not okay and all lies are lies. There's no really less lie, lies are lies. And teaching the children that it's okay to lie in certain situations. And it was so unfortunate. And... And help us, Father God. Uh, But uh, I just thank God for his truth. I thank God for his word. I thank God for his word. I love you guys. And I thank you for joining with us. We love those in government. We love the people. We hate the sin. We love the people. Amen. So we do not ridicule those in government. We do not shame them. Because what if it was us up there? But we do speak the truth boldly, but we do it in love, amen, in decency and in order, in respect. We have to respect those in authority. We look at the Israelites and how they dealt with those in authority, even when they were in a captivity. Daniel, the respect that he had for those in authority. Uh, Nehemiah, how they treated those in authority. They were submitted. They still did what God told them to do. Daniel did not bow and worship the king, but he respected him. And so we need to respect. There's a way to disagree, but we need to do it in a godly way with respect as children of God. Amen. I'm not perfect, so, but I want to encourage you. Respect those in authority. Respect those over you. Respect the leadership because... God does not tolerate dishonor. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to show the world that we're acting just like the world and we're ridiculing. We can disagree. Again, there's a way to disagree and do it respectively and in order. And you're going to gain a lot more with that than trying to shame people and trying to tear them down. There's a way to disagree and you'll gain favor with men and God as you are loving and faithful, loving and kind. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. Take care.